Hello YouTube. Today we're going to do something a little different than I've usually done. Instead of watching me have a bad job of fishing or a poor job of filming fixing my broken fishing junk, what we're going to do is fix the broken furnace instead. Yay! To start out with, let's see what it does wrong. I'm going to turn out a light here. And I will show you exactly what it does wrong. The furnace is now on. Do you hear it making that noise? That humming noise? Well, that indicates it's trying. See that little green light there? We're going to watch that for a few seconds. until it discovers there's a problem. Which I've already done, but I'm walking you through this. Come on. I believe it takes it about a minute. Surely you can hear that hunt. There it goes. It now realizes there's a problem. And does a one, two, three flash code. I will now... Okay, it shut itself off. Gave up trying, and I will flip its switch to turn off the power. All right, now. In here... This is our diagram, and as you can see there, three flashes, which is what we got, is combustion air switch failed to close. This is a chopstick, not a Harry Potter wand. Three flashes. Combustion air switch failed to close. So we look up here to our diagram. I'm in the, may, in the way of the light. So there, there is my headlamp on. If we look around, man, 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 here is the combustion air switch, which indicates blue and blue. That's two blue wires that lead to combustion air switch, which is our problem. All right, so combustion air switch failed to close. This is the only thing with two blue wires going to it. So it is your combustion air switch, which can be confirmed by finding your installation manual. I had to look it up on the internet, but the part number here and here match what's in the manual as combustion air switch. Okay, now, maybe there's actually nothing wrong with it. And I'll show you how to test it. Okay, we're gonna attempt to test this switch. Now, the first thing you wanna do is make sure it's actually getting any power. And to do that, pull off both of the wires. Don't let your voltmeter go on the floor. Pull off both of the wires. Make sure the meter is on. I wish it would stand up, but it sucks. Can you see it? Uh, let's hope you can. Anyway, stick a, stick a lead in each wire. And then we'll turn the switch on. And lo and behold, see, it's getting 25, 26 volts. So it's getting power to the switch. C. 
so. It's not a problem with power. Is the switch bad? Is the switch bad though? We will reconnect one wire and get a jumper. Connect it to the other connection. And if your meter didn't fall on the floor and break, which mine has actually still got numbers on it, which is great. I recommend a meter with a stand on it. Wouldn't that be nice? Take, uh, take one lead and it doesn't, because it's AC, it really doesn't matter much which one you choose. I'm just sticking it in there so it'll stand up nice and neat and not flop on something and short itself out. See, look at that, nice and neat. Stick my probe in here. And then we flip the switch because failed to close. That means it's stuck in the open position. An open circuit, the wires are not connected. They're open. So there it's trying and we get zero. What the switch does is test the air pressure between these two hoses. If I can get this hose off, this is the high pressure hose, and if I blow in it, it should conduct the voltage. It did. Did you see the meter there? I bought one anyway. Because I didn't bother to do any testing, I just rushed out and bought one. And guess what? It turned out that's not my problem. But if it was, if that is your problem, I'm going to move the camera real quick. If that was what was wrong, if that was your problem, I'm also going to move the light source here. If it turns out that that was what was wrong with yours, well, it's easy to change. You just remove both wires. We'll just remove that entirely. Remove both hoses. And as you can see, there's only two screws there that hold this sucker on. And for, it cost me 26 bucks to buy a new one. Which, even though this one is still good, this is the old one. I'm going to go ahead and put the new one on because why not? Since this one's still good, though, I'm going to save it. Because that will keep me from ever having to buy a new one again. Not that I'll ever use it, but, you know, if you don't throw anything out you'll never need it. Second you do, maybe you will though. So here's the new one. And uh, as you can see, there is a part number. There is a part number, they both match. There's the two part numbers and they both match. And on the front, it's my pointer. On the front, the part number you want is not the top part, not the bottom part, but the middle one. The middle one. The other may give you some other, other information, but it's, it's the middle one that, that counts. That's the one that matches the other label. That's the one that matches the parts in the installation guide. Mm. 
one socket. We will use our eight millimeter socket for removing these two bolts and replacing them. And you'll notice this has a T-shaped hole on it. So there's some slop around which it can move, but but it's not really going to move much. It's going to basically go where it's supposed to go. And if that was all that my problem was, this sucker would be fixed. But it's not. It turns out this switch senses the pressure between these two fittings. Inside here is a fan motor that sucks in air down this tube inside here let me get my pointer again inside here there is a fan motor that sucks air it sucks air from up there on the roof down this tube and blows it into the furnace with which to burn the gas. And I found out the hardware after spending 26 bucks on that switch that when the code for the switch happens, it may not be the switch at all. It may be this motor and it is. So I bought one of those. It was not 26 bucks. It was more. But before I bought one, I did do a little bit of testing. You hear it make that noise. Well, we unplug these fan blower wires. You don't hear it now, do you? It's because this motor's not trying to go anymore. But just to double check, just to make sure it was getting power, we'll get out our trusty, somewhat abused meter and stick a probe in each of these suckers. Turn it on, of course. So here we're showing basically zero. We turn it on. Shazam, 120 volts. So it is sending power to that motor. It is trying to utilize that motor. But the motor is not working. So it needs replaced. And that is a far more complex and involved process.